This is Vivian Peter. She's about to be trafficked from Nigeria into Europe. We need blood from her. She's swearing an oath of loyalty to her traffickers in a black magic ritual. When the ceremony is through, she believes they will own her soul. You can see how psychologically powerful a ritual like this is. Like thousands before her, Vivian will now be compelled to sell her body on the streets of Europe. I was about to meet the Nigerian women trapped into a life of sex slavery by black magic. We're on a country road about an hour's drive north of Milan, and all along the road, you're seeing women who are obviously soliciting. And these women are not Italian, they're African. My journey began in Italy, where up to 20,000 Nigerian women work as prostitutes. I think there's another one over here. really really cold but still every few meters or so we are seeing women standing out here and waiting the next morning a local contact put us in touch with one of the nigerian women she said we could film her at home so long as we hid her face rita's 27 she sleeps with 10 men a day, seven days a week, for 20 euros a time. I feel bad because uh, I have to pay who brought me here. How much do you have to pay the person who 50, brought you? 50,000 euros. 50,000 euros? Yeah. And you've been here? For five years. How much longer do you think you'll have to work? Like two years. Rita told me customers had left her badly beaten several times in the past. Why do you go out to work every day? Why don't you just run away? I'll be uh, the oath that I took. The oath? Yeah. She said she'd sworn to repay her debt in a traditional West African religious ritual. She called it juju. It's very, very, very uh, uh, scary, you know? That if you don't pay this money, you're going to run mad, you're going to destroy your family, and myself will never remain the same again, you know? You're a Christian, but you believe in this, in this black magic, this juju. You know, the Africans, they have a, a, a strong shams. You know, that can kill even a single trickle of an eye. Rita was in a hurry to go out and work. Her boss, a woman she called her madam, would soon be around to collect money. On top of her debt, Rita has to pay her madam 300 euros a month in rent to solicit from this patch. You're going to stand here from, from now, from 3.30 till 5 in the morning. They can come at anything. Rita is being kept in Italy against her will, enduring years of exploitation because of her fear of juju. That coercion makes her a victim of trafficking. Rita's making a living standing on a road strewn with condoms, and she says she's being compelled to stay here because of an oath she's sworn. The madams who she's paying back are set to be incredibly rich because of Rita's faith in black magic. And those madams don't need muscle to control Rita. They've got the spirits on their side. She's got a client now. We traveled 3,000 miles to Nigeria. We wanted to track down the juju priests who'd made the women we saw in Italy so terrified. 80% of Nigerians trafficked into Europe begin their journey here in the small southern state of Edo. The countryside is a notorious recruiting ground for traffickers. We arrived in Ewoini, a village where almost every family has a relative abroad. I wondered whether any of you knew anyone, had any members of your family, women, who've gone to Europe to make money. Is that something you know of? Your sister's gone? Yeah. She's married over there. She married a white man. If you're a parent and your child goes to Europe, 
Are you proud? Yes, we are yes. proud. They see their sister who's sent money home as a hero, as someone who's helped their family, who's made a massive difference to their lives, and they're really proud of her. After we turned our camera off, the family told us their sister in Italy hasn't just moved there herself, but was also recruiting other women from Edo to work for her. Her brother, Elonel, is helping her find women. He's invited us back to his house today, where he says we can meet someone who's just about to make the trip. Elonel, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Should we go in? Is she here? Vivian Peter is 23. She made her living selling tomatoes at the local market. Why do you want to go to Europe? I'm the second child of my mother. I have little kids at home to take care of. That's why I need money. You want to give them a good life? Yes. How are you going to pay for your trip? Most of the people go there and do prostitution out there in Italy. But, yeah, I can't do that. Do you know how much you're going to have to pay? No, I don't have any idea of that. I don't have any idea. Even when I get there. You say you don't want to do prostitution, but do you think maybe you might have to in the beginning to make the money that you need? Yeah. Do you think it's worth it? Yeah. Vivian said Elonel was her boyfriend. He'd made all the travel plans for her and had booked her in to see a juju priest. I'll go and see somebody that will help me to prevent myself before I go. He's a priest. You know how, you know how he will do it. You know. you know how he will do it. Will he bring you good fortune? Yeah. So you're doing it for luck? Yes, good luck. It seems a little strange to me that he's your boyfriend, you've been together for so long, and yet he's arranging for you to go away. You don't think there's anything strange about that? Mm, it's because of, um, there's no job in this town. We are not comfortable. So I just have to go, make some money, come and pick him, put us together to survive. Elonel, Vivian's recruiter, told me his sister was going to pay him for making the arrangements. There is no money in Nigeria here. Yes, Normally in this village there is no money here. So that's why I decided for her to travel. So even though she may have to work as a prostitute, you have no choice and you're not going to stop her? I'm not going to stop her. Just because a lot of people do it over there. So I don't have choice. That for her to go. What if she gets there and she realizes that she was wrong and that she's having a terrible time and she wants to come home? The prince will help her out. The, the, the juju doctor will help, will, her will help her out. So that she will be free over there. He said Vivian was going to go through a ceremony that served two purposes. It would bring her luck and also ensure his sister in Italy got paid. What do they promise in that oath? I promise that I will pay the money to the, uh, the sponsor that I take her there. Before leaving Nigeria, Vivian needed to go shopping to prepare for her new life overseas. She invited me to join her in Urami. What sort of things do you think you'll need to take to Italy? What are you going to take with you? I need short knicker. Mm -hmm. I need them. Short knickers? Yes. Who told you you need short knickers? <laughs> My sponsor. Your sponsor? Elonel's sister? This one is more beautiful. This kind of thing? Yeah. Because you like them short? Yeah. Short. Aren't you worried you'll be cold there in Italy? I don't think so. She's obviously really excited about going, this whole process yeah. of buying clothes. It's almost like it's a fantasy and okay. she's allowing it to happen. When dawn broke the next morning, it was time for Vivian to see the juju priest and swear her oath of loyalty to her traffickers. The ritual that you're doing today, who's organizing it? Alala. And who's paying for the, for the ritual? Alala. Hello. Good morning. How are you? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling fine. As the ceremony was about to begin, the juju priest, who they called Dr. Stanley, explained the power of the oath Vivian was about to swear. If she promised to fail, 
Ama Shiran, we named blood from her. My power came from river. I can use my power to destroy in any, in any which way. Any type of sickness, I can throw it to the person. Whether a cancer or a stroke, different, different kind of sickness will come to the person. Doesn't it make you feel bad inside that mm. you're compelling these women mm. to continue with a life of prostitution because they think they'll die or have a horrible spiritual fate if they don't? When you promise this is what you will do, unfailingly, you must do it. We can come. He invited us into his shrine. Ordinary people come to Dr. Stanley for all sorts of reasons, but rituals funded by traffickers are the most lucrative part of his operation. Ah! LNL paid the fee up front, £120, a huge amount of money here. Then, Dr. Stanley began to summon the spirits. Vivian is going to have a bath now to be prepared for the, for the rest of the ceremony. Juju is a traditional religion that's existed in West Africa for hundreds of years. It's still widely practiced in Edo. Believers say invisible spirits govern the earth and control human existence. These spirits can be called on to protect people, but they can also destroy them. Dr. Stanley marked Vivian's body so the spirits could identify which soul was being offered to them. You can offer. You can offer. Every one of you, every one of us here, Anything when we touch, it will become. He commanded the spirits to track Vivian on her journey and watch her in Italy. You can see how psychologically powerful a ritual like this is. So many different elements, so many different things, and it actually does feel slightly intimidating. Then Vivian swore her oath. Nigerians have used Juju to form binding contracts for at least 500 years. For those like Vivian who've been brought up believing in it, there's no way of hiding a broken promise from the spirits. Are we done? Yeah. We're done. It's finished. Yes, it's finished. But do it. We're through. The oath is sworn. Dr. Stanley told us countless other women have sworn oaths of loyalty to different traffickers at his shrine. It's my understanding that what's happened here is that you, you've given part of your soul here. Yes, yes. He holds it here. Yeah. Do you feel safer now or do you feel in more danger? No, I feel safe. You feel safe? Yeah, but I feel safe in his hands. Vivian believed the spirits were now going to protect her. The price of this reassurance was promising to pay back whatever Elonel's sister asked for in Italy. Now that she's seen the priest, does that mean she has to go? She can't change her mind? She can't change her mind. And how do you feel about that? But I feel bad, but no option that's for her to go. But you organized all of this? Mm, I know. But I still have some feelings inside me. The juju priests aren't traffickers, but they're paid to provide the most vital part of the process, the ritual that makes women compliant. We left Vivian to pack her bags. In Benin City, we met a woman who's dedicated her life to understanding and fighting trafficking. Sister Florence Noel Numa travels to schools around Edo to warn children about the reality of prostitution in Europe. They make them do things they don't want to do. They make them stand on the road and they'll be receiving, be receiving many men every day, every day, every day, every day. You will not be able to see your mommy again. You will not see your daddy again. 
Sister Florence told me trafficking was an open secret here in Edo, and Juju was the backbone of the business. It's very common. In fact, virtually every home here has one or two of their children outside Nigeria and Europe. What is the function of the oath? How significant is it to the trafficking chain? It's a very strong thing, very, very strong, because they are thinking of the oath. They are thinking that part of them is still with the juju man. So it's difficult to even do counseling with them until you can break the oath. Sister Florence had someone she wanted us to meet. She says she's thanking God, thanking God that her daughter returned and she got to see her daughter Anne again. Anne said her family was starving three years ago when a trafficker approached her and offered to take her overland to work in Europe. When she got to Mali, the trafficker handed her over to a madame. The madame said, you're going to work here, you've got to work as a prostitute, you owe us a lot of money and we're going to get the money back from you. She said she didn't want to do that kind of work and the madame said, you have to, this is what you've got to do to pay us back. Last year, Anne was rescued from Mali with her baby son, Gospelwa. But when she arrived back in Nigeria, she found out she had HIV. Has it been difficult for you to continue life here? There is nobody who can help for me to start back my life again. You need to even contribute. Nobody can contribute for me. And what about, what about your husband? I don't think it's a life again. My husband is dead. I still am you. Think about my life alone. Anne, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Anne. I'm so sorry, Anne. It's okay. Okay, sister. Are you okay? It's such an incredibly difficult story to listen to because you see how the problems caused by trafficking persist long after people come home. Her life has been completely ruined. to ask Elonel how he could bear to let his girlfriend Vivian go through something like this. I tracked him down to a bar an hour away from his home. You're here in Epoma. How come you're here? So my sister sent me here just because of the girl that is traveling out. The girls? Yeah. It's not just Vivian who's traveling? No. How many other girls are there? There are three. Three? So you're organizing for three girls to go and work for your sister in Europe? Yeah, when they get there, if things is going well, they will send me money. They will send you money. So yeah. you stand to make a lot of money as well. Yeah. Is money more important to you than the well-being of your girlfriend and these women? I don't have to feel bad just because of I need money. You need money so it doesn't make I, I you need, feel I bad? Need, I need money. It doesn't make me feel bad. It's quite incredible to hear, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're so matter-of-fact about it. Yeah. Elonel refused to give us contact details of the person in Italy he says is his sister. We weren't able to put his claims to her. Every year, hundreds of traffic women are arrested in Europe and deported back to Nigeria. In 2003, the Nigerian government set up NAPTIP, an anti-trafficking agency. But getting women to give evidence against their traffickers is a serious challenge for investigators like Peter's Coyote. Because of that oath itself, I was very afraid, fearful to say this, that something will happen to them and all that so much. We try to, you know, allay the fear. We have a plan to revoke the oath administered on the victim that was... Uh, from Russia. 
I've just been told that the woman who's been repatriated, the victim of trafficking, has arrived and she's here. Native have asked that we don't show her face. Since her return from Europe, 26-year-old Sandra had been living in a government-run shelter for her own safety. The officers drove her to the outskirts of Benin City. This is where Sandra swore her oath three years ago. For the revocation to work, it had to be done by the same juju priest in the same shrine. This is the shrine and the man with beads around his neck, he's the juju priest. He was performing this revocation ceremony under pressure from the government officials. And she should come and she will make her prayer by herself. Sandra seemed terrified. We're not allowed to film her face, but I can see that she is muttering something, she's saying something, she's saying her own prayer to the spirits. It's cleared. It's cleared. It's cleared? Yeah, the problem is solved. The problem is solved. It took less than a minute to free Sandra from an oath that kept her trapped for years in Europe as a sex slave. The power of the spirits is so strong that women who are trafficked fear the spirits more than they fear their traffickers, more than they fear their clients, more than they fear the police. And the only way to get over the oath that they've sworn is to use more juju. It was Vivian's last day in her village. You haven't told your brothers and sisters, you haven't told your friends. No. When do you think you'll see them again? <laughs> It will be a very long time. I don't know. Don't you think you'll miss them, Vivian? Yes. Doesn't that make you feel sad? Mm -hmm. I feel sad sometimes, but sometimes I still look at it. I can't do anything about it again. I'll make up my mind that I'll go to Italy. I have been to Italy and I've seen the work that women from, from Edo do when they go and work as prostitutes in Italy. They were so unhappy. The woman we spoke to had been working for four years and she still hadn't paid off her debt. If you have your hand working, you will not suffer. I know how to plait hair, anything that I know how to do it. So you're sure that you won't fall into a life like that? No. The debt is really huge. It's 50,000 euros. That's like 10 million naira. I don't think so. That's how much the people that I've spoken to, that's how much they had to pay back, 10 million naira. My will not be like that. There's nothing that's going to convince you not to go, is yeah. there? I've made up my mind that I'll go there. I must go there. <laughs> I just it. <sighs> right, well, good luck. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Keep safe. Thank you. Vivian's determination to improve her life made it easy for LNL to exploit her. The juju oath made it impossible for her to change her mind. As long as Vivian has faith in ancient, traditional beliefs, her traffickers will be able to trap her in a very modern kind of slavery. If you'd like to find out more about trafficking from Nigeria or anything else on Unreported World, please visit our website, channel4.com slash unreportedworld. And you can join the online discussion about the issues raised in this program at that address, channel4.com slash unreportedworld.